My name is Cassandra Washington and I am a professional learning consultant with Math Solutions and I'm here today uh, we are going to explore uh, Go Math, the actual planning and pacing session and we're going to take a look and explore uh, Think Central and all of the resources that are available to you as a uh, teacher who's starting the program. So before we start, I'm letting you know that I am actually going to switch back and forth between a PowerPoint and also the Think Central um, web page. So you uh, be patient uh, that we're flipping back and forth, but we're going to get through this. And I want to make sure that you're able to see the screen. And so let me set up the slideshow. We're starting from this current slide. <coughs> Excuse me. So again, I am Cassandra Washington, a professional learning consultant with uh, Math Solutions. And the purpose of this session, we are actually uh, reviewing the teaching with Go Math, planning and pacing. Uh, we're going to review uh, using the PowerPoint on planning and pacing first, and then together we will explore the resources available on Think Central. So before we get started, I want to make sure to remind you that when we log into Think Central, you, would, you will need a username and a password. If you do not have uh, either of those, uh, you can log in as an evaluator and a username and password will be created for you. And that username and password is available to you for 120 days, or at least until your, um, until your district assigns your username and password. So first we're going to take a look at the PowerPoint, two slides together, and this uh, will help prepare you for when we explore Think Central. So you'll have you'll know what to expect as far as um, some of the links and things that we will be working on. So as you know, as a teacher, planning is essential to teaching and learning. And as we began looking uh, at the slides and the dashboard, you can take notes on your in in your PLG, your professional learning guide, on page 27. And also, when you when you log into Think Central, you're going to land on a teacher dashboard, and there is a slide here that will let you know what that looks like. And when you do land on that page, I just want you to reflect a little bit because previously we talked about the student experience, and you got to explore. So I want you to think about the similarities and the differences from the teacher dashboard and the student dashboard. So we're gonna. We're going to move to the next slide. So what you see here, let me move my picture a little bit. What you see here <clears throat> is what the teacher dashboard will actually uh, look like when you uh, hit the landing page. And on the dashboard, you will see um, assignments, re uh, reports, and you will also see res resources. And one other thing that you will see uh, is the planner. And at the top, you will see the home key, and then there's a help key that you can click on uh, to um, open up a new tab, and it displays the HMH Comprehensive Online Help System. So if you're having some difficulties in figuring out how, how to perform a, a, um, a procedure on uh, the dashboard or on Things Central, it will explain everything to you. So let me just talk for a second. The planner section, you can actually view your digital planner if you create one. Assignments and report section, you can, view, you can view report data and any upcoming assignments. And then the resources section, that's where you access your teacher and your student resources. So let's move to the next slide. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, as you can see, it's pointing to. So, when, you're, when we're on the dashboard and we're navigating the dashboard, again, um, let me go back. Go back one. All right. Uh, so when you're navigating the dashboard, 
again, here are the key links that we will we will engage in. So uh, at the top, you have your home, you have your help key, you have your settings, and then you have number two, you have your search bar. Number three, you have your planner, my smart planner. Number four, uh, the resource link. That's where you'll find the teacher and the student resources. Number five, assignments. Any assignments that you assign to your students, like homework and uh, any of the pages in the, in the um, textbook. Uh, and, and six, you will see where there are reports. You can pull reports or generate reports based on ass uh, assignment scores, tests uh, and assessment scores, so you can plan your data, uh, you can plan your instruction based on the data from these reports. Then we will go uh, on the resources page where you will be able to access, um, like again, the teacher resources and student resources. So as I said earlier, planning effective lessons is very crucial. It's very crucial to uh, executing quality instruction. So with Go Math, it begins with the big picture and when you're planning. So when getting started with Go Math, most teachers, they rely on the resource section. So we're going to spend some time exploring um, that section. So when we go online, uh, one of the pages that you're going to land on here is the resource page and I will guide you through how to actually get to that page. When you land on that page, I want you to pay very special attention to the color of the icons here. So if it's yellow, it is a student resource. If it is red, it is a teacher resource. If it is teal, then it's a professional development resource for you. And if it's green, then it is a testing resource. So let me say that one more time. So if it's red, it's a teacher resource. If it's yellow, it is a student resource. If it is teal, it is a professional development resource. And lastly, if it's green, it is a testing resource. And um, when you explore the teacher edition, you'll notice how the colors correlate also. Now, turn to page 28 through 34 to follow along, and then you can also take additional notes. Okay, wasn't supposed to do that, but <laughs> we're going to explore online. We're going to actually explore the, um, on Think Central, the resource page. So we're going to start out, I want you to log on to Think Central, and then your landing page is going to look like this once you log in. I'll give everybody a second to log in. I'm going to move this down a little bit so you can see the page, and again, as we saw on the slide, um, this is our landing page for Thanks Central. This is our dashboard. And at the top, you will see the home, the help button, new features where you log out when need be. This is your search bar here. So you can search for resources that you need. Then you have my account where you can uh, work on your settings specifically for you, and then manage classroom where we make assignments, where we add students, um, and where we add classes, which we will get into later on in a different session during the day. Before we start, I want to make sure that we are in the right program before we continue on. So, not sure why it's doing that, but I am going to, going to re-sign in, log in. Technology is great when it works. Okay, we're back on our landing page and our dashboard. 
So make sure we are in Go Math. All right. So again, on this page, we have our, my Smart Planner, which you can use to um, schedule lessons. You can use to schedule assessments. Uh, it is digital, and this can help you uh, be more organized if you like using uh, planners. This is for you, and if you don't like using planners, then try it. You won't believe how organized it keeps you. And we have our assignments here that we can assign uh, homework or any other activities. We can assign assessments that we want the students to take. And then our reports. Again, as I explained, these are data reports. At the top, you have your resource link. And then you have the grade levels that um, correlate with Go Math. Remember if to always check and make sure you're in the right program. Because if your school district has other um, hardcore uh, programs, then um, those may show up also. So now that we're online, we're going to first start planning with the planning guide. Now I am going to select a grade level and I'm going to select fourth grade. No, first, I'm sorry, I'm going to collect the resources page, the resources link, because I want you to see the entire page. Once you click the resources link, you will see this page here. You must select your subject, which we are doing math. Again, if you have other HMH products, then uh, you may be able to select some reading or science. I'm going to select fourth grade, and then I'm going to keep all language. No, actually, I'm going to do English, and then I'm going to make sure my program is Go Math. Now you can see all of the resources available for fourth grade Go Math. Let's remember our colors. If it is red, it is a teacher resource. And you'll see next to it, it has TE. If it is yellow, it is a student resource, and it has SE. If it is green, it is a testing resource. And if it is teal, it is a professional development resource for you as a teacher. So just keep those in mind. Those colors will come in handy for you. So I'm going to first click on find uh, the planning guide. And the color will, of course, be red because it is a teaching resource. So here is the planning guide for fourth grade. So I am going to click on it. I'm going to actually open it in a new tab so I can come back to uh, my dashboard without a problem. So here is the, the um, planning guide for fourth grade. And what I want you to take a look at are some tabs that are important and useful to you. Let's start with uh, PD, the professional development, which is to help to support implementation of Go Math. And as you can see, we have professional development, Common Core State Standards, uh, PD supporting mathematical practice through questioning. Here's another professional development. So those resources are there to help you with the implementation of Go Math. Then um, there's a year at a glance, and year at a glance is actually under the planning resources. So let's just take a quick quick look at this, and this provides an overview for the entire year. You'll see there's a project, a real world project at the top. Here is the critical area, place values and operation with whole numbers. See critical area and it's right here. It goes into a little more explanation. Then you have your domain, number and operations in base 10, your uh, Standards are in green, so you can see those. 
any assessments, like show what you know, mid-chapter checkpoint, and chapter review, those are in red. So, so these colors help you to, um, you know, it stands out so you'll know exactly what you're looking at. And here are the Common Core State Standards down here at the, uh, down right here, up under the actual, um, uh, the domain and green and the standards are here. If you continue to scroll down at the planning resources, you can see practice and homework. Uh, you can see mathematical practices. Those are important. And your year at a glance. All of this helps for helps you to plan without, you know, stressing. It's here for you. Go Math has done a lot of the work for you. It, continue, it continues on. Also, it, each um, it also lets you know how many chapters are in each. So, for example, for fractions, equivalence, and comparison, there are actually eight lessons. And then you have your prerequisite assessment to show what they know. You have your mid-chapter checkpoint. You have your chapter six review test. Always always there is a real world project um, so that you know math becomes more ris realistic for, for the students. <clears throat> I'm going to scroll all the way down to the bottom so you can just see what else. The end of the year resources is real important. That's to help your students uh, at the to, to find out more about what they need as they go from fourth to fifth grade or if you teach second grade from second to third grade. So here are some resources for you to check out towards the end of the um, for the end of the year and how you can push your kids even more. Um, there are review projects. There's uh, daily pacing charts. There's the digital resources that you will use. So I'll give you more time later to actually explore for your own grade level so you can get more acquainted with um, these resources. So remember this, if you want to create a tab for it, so you can go back later. This is year at a glance. And we will go out of this. And now we're going to take a look at critical area projects. I want to click on that. This is a very good resource for you too. So there are projects that children can uh, participate in and all the work is here for you. The overview, the introduction, there are questions uh, that the students can answer, it's real life situations or scenarios that embed math and, and expands their math knowledge, their math vocabulary. It's all here for you as teachers. So I hope that you will spend some time exploring that and thinking about and reflecting about how you can actually use the critical area projects. Okay, so if you want to tab that page also, uh, feel free to do that. So we're going to go back to Think Central. We're going to go back to our dashboard. And again, I'm using the tabs so that we can go back and forth easier. Next, we're going to take a look at the teacher edition, the TE. And again, I'm in fourth grade. And as you're looking on the dashboard for the teacher edition, remember that it's going to be a red colored icon because it is a teacher resource. But after the planning guide, now I didn't do what I usually do. I'm going to do it again with a new tab. Now, after the planning guide, we're going to explore this teacher edition. And we're going to um, actually explore, we're going to go back to the PowerPoint for a second because I want you to see, before we do it, 
We did the chapter at a glance so you could see that and the chapter pacing. And let you see a couple of other things we're going to explore first. We're going to explore the chapter resources. And you'll be able to take a look and um, see what all different resources you're able to use. For example, for example, there's more planning. We, we looked at the chapter at a glance. Then there's teaching for deaf, deeper understanding. There's daily classroom management um, strategies that you can use, help you with your planning. Strategies for EL. Black English, I always say EL, but English learners. Developing math language, and you know how important that math vocabulary is. Uh, reviewing prerequisite quick skills. Learning progression and content standards. We're going to take a look at that as we uh, delve online. And then we're going to do some reflection. So we're going to go back. <clears throat> We're going to go back, let's see, to our teacher edition first. And I want you to take a look. Let me open this up. First at the front matter. Uh, I want you to take a look at chapter one. We're going to click on that and open it up. Chapter one. And when you click on chapter one or any chapter, you have planning, you have lessons, then chapter review, and you actually have chapter a uh, chapter one test. Just take a look at that right quick. So when we click on planning, because remember planning is, is key to effective instruction. So you click on planning and let's look at chapter at a glance. When you see the chapter at a glance again, the domain is here, number and operations of base 10. You have your chapter essential questions. That's there. That's the big picture, the big idea. Then with each lesson, it gives you an idea how long that lesson is going to take. So that helps with your pacing. And then um, it lists the standard um, modeling place value relationships. Here's your essential question for that lesson, the objective, the vocabulary, the EL strategy for every lesson. Then if you scroll down, you can see that there are digital resources to use, Go Math Digital Resource, and they list them all here for you. Student Edition, the ISC, the E-Teacher Edition, the Personal Math Trainer, the PMT, Math on the Spot videos, iTools, in HMH Mega Math, then the print resources. If you're using, the, if you prefer the print re resources, here they are, right here. And then RTI response to intervention. Uh, show what you know. So here's before the chapter. This is what you're going to do. You're going to show what you know during the lessons. Here are the, the strategies that you use to check for understanding and to. Uh, uh, know in which direction you're going to continue your instruction. And then after the chapter, here are the uh, chapter review or reteach if you need uh, using the personal math trainer. Continuing on, here's the chapter pacing chart, digital resources. Again, you can have teacher notes and then assessments. That's the chapter at a glance. Let's move on. Uh, these are other areas that you can actually take a look at, and I'll give you more time to explore on your own. Uh, but teaching for depth. 
this is a professional development um, opportunity for you. Exploring teaching for deaf goes more into the number system in this chapter for fourth grade, uh, connecting to algorithms. And what's really nice is that they show the research that this is based on. So it's helping you to understand why this particular algorithm or strategy actually works. Or here is more about the mathematical practices. And then for you, there are some professional development uh, videos. Take advantage of those professional development videos because um, they can really give you some suggestions and ideas on how particular strategies do work. A lot of them are in actual classrooms where teachers are actually uh, using those strategies on the students and you can get an idea of how it may work in your classroom. So again, that is Teaching for Deaf if you want to explore that more. And as you can see, we have strat I want to show you the um, daily classroom management and then for the EL students, just so you can see that. Daily classroom management, this is differentiated instruction. Uh, we've we've uh, explored the five E's, engage, explore, explain, elaborate, and evaluate. Here is whole group instruction, then our small group tier two, and then whole group for more uh, enrichment. Uh, here's some enrichment for advanced students. Uh, it breaks it down to the point where how many students actually may have gotten correct, zero to one, and how you need to intervene and what type of extra support that you can give those students. And then there's the differentiation centers that you can use. Uh, so don't forget about those uh, when you're thinking about RTI and how you can provide additional support to uh, the students. And the last one I want to show you for this chapter uh, is the strategies for EL learners. And then we will actually move on here for the strategies, uh, eliciting prior knowledge strategy. If you're familiar with EL students, you know, they may not know the language, but they may have had the experience in uh, math. And we need to decipher whether it is a language or is it, is it the experience. So this gives you some tips on what benefits um, English learners and how you can actually plan for the instruction. And then at each end, there's a linguistic note to give you a little more about how multiple meanings of English words can often confuse uh, the students. So let's take a moment to just breathe and digest all of that. Uh, that is a lot of information. And like I said, I will give you time to actually explore on your own um, a little later. We just had a couple more things that we actually need to go over. I'll give you a second to breathe. We're going to go back. We're going to get out of the... Okay, we're going to go back to Think Central. And our next step is we are going to talk about chapter resources for your grade level. But I want you to scroll a little bit more and just see all of the actual teacher resources there are and the professional development resources that there are. So remember, teacher resources are red. Professional development resources are um, teal. And the testing ones are green. Students are yellow. So what we're going to click on next, the chapter resources book for you as the teacher. 
And on this page, here is where you can actually look at the assessments that you are uh, privy to online. And it's nice because all of these uh, assessments are right here for you as you plan your instruction, as you plan your assessment. So take some time to um, take a look at those when you have that time to explore on your own. I want to go back to the teacher, uh, I'm sorry, to the teacher edition. Just want to go back for a second. Uh, I want you to click on the chapter one, just like we did. I want you to click on planning again. Because I want to make sure you understand how important this, these are when you're planning your lessons and how much of these that you, um, you, may not, you may not use them all, but I want you to consider how helpful they could actually be to, uh, to you and, you know, eventually to your students. So just reflect on that when we ask those questions about reflecting on how you can actually use these, then um, share that with me. So these are all chapter resources that will actually help you in the long run. If there are any questions or any other things that you would like to explore, um, we can do that now. I can go back. I want to make sure I cover as much as I can for you. So you have EL Activity Guide. You have the critical area projects that are here. Again, those projects ex help extend the learning. At the end of the year, the getting ready for math, uh, getting ready for grade five, because I'm looking at grade four. Transparencies, Go Math Lesson Transparencies, Go Math Interactive Student Edition. That's the, the teacher edition of that. And the teacher resource book. It's a good source. It has a table of contents, a list of support videos. Take advantage of all of these resources. I know it's overwhelming, but I think you will um, you will appreciate all of these. Again, the planning guide has almost all <laughs> so much information. We have looked at that, and I just want to go back right quick to that planning guide so you can take a look and see what else there is there. It's the planning instructional path. It actually lays out the pacing of each lesson to help you cover as much as possible. And the correlations are here also. Look at this. Correlations, the standards, it shows you what's major content, what's supporting content, and additional content. It's color co coordinated. Majors green, teal is supporting content. Yellow is additional content. Those colors will really help you. Take my word for it. So we've covered quite a bit. Um, I'm going to give you an opportunity to actually explore it on your own. And then what I would like for you all to do, I want you to consider which resources you will commit to using uh, to help with effective instruction. I want you to turn to page 35 in your PLG to record your responses. And I'm going to pull up I'm going to pull up our PowerPoint again. I want you to reflect on these planning resources. 
I want you to answer these questions. What planning resources will you use to plan effective instruction? And how will these resources impact planning? So take a few minutes to uh, think about this, record your answers, then talk with your table mates or partner. And then after that, I will ask for three or four people to actually share. So now that you have shared your answers and your reflective thoughts on how you're going to be planning, we will take a few minutes for a break, about five minutes, and then we will transition until the next the next uh, session. So I appreciate your time. Take a breather and we will be back.